Hi, my name is Chitra and I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Biomedical Engineering and Mechanics at Virginia Tech. For today's talk, I'd like to discuss focused ultrasound-induced strains in murine Achilles tendons. Tendon injuries are very common and may be acute or chronic. Acute injuries are a result of a singular high loading event resulting in either partial or complete rupture, whereas chronic tendon injuries are an accumulation of microtrauma over time. There are multiple risk factors for chronic injuries, including age, activity levels, and other health conditions. However, mechanical overuse is very often implicated as the main pathological stimulus of chronic tendon injuries. There are currently several conservative treatment options for chronic tendon injuries, such as rest and immobilization, anti-inflammatory drugs, growth factor injections, etc. However, these strategies are often not efficient long-term, presenting a high risk of re-injury. Physical therapy is the principal treatment of choice across all tendinopathies and has shown to improve pain and functionality. On this slide here, you can see a patient performing a heel drop exercise, which is often prescribed for patients with Achilles tendinopathy. This approach is called mechanotherapy, where we induce adaptation of the musculoskeletal tissues to mechanical strains by directing cellular and molecular responses to achieve healing and or regeneration. Therapeutic ultrasound has been incorporated within physiotherapy settings for a long time now. The effect of such methods on stimulating healing of acute tendon injuries has been investigated predominantly in animal studies. Biomechanical metrics such as ultimate tensile strength and structural metrics such as collagen organization and aggregation have been commonly characterized in these studies. Some studies reported that low-intensity ultrasound improves tendon strength and accelerates collagen formation after acute injury in preclinical models. However, while the general indications are that low-intensity ultrasound enhances biomechanical and structural properties, ultrasound parameters like intensity, frequency, and mode, and also the animal models, such as species, the tendon of interest, and injury type have varied across studies. Because of such inconsistencies, we cannot make a direct comparison of results, and we cannot confirm cellular and molecular mechanisms attributable to treatments. As for clinical studies, therapeutic ultrasound has been studied in a few cases of tennis elbow, patellar tendinopathy, and Achilles tendinopathy. While some of them report improvements in pain and functionality, some randomized control trials indicated that low-intensity pulsed ultrasound provided no additional benefit for chronic tendinopathies. Recently, a few studies have examined the effects of high-intensity focused ultrasound on rodent and bovine tendons, ex vivo, evaluating the source of pain and mechanical fractionation ability. Focused ultrasound pulsing to mimic the effects of dry needling as an avenue to treat tendon injuries has been proposed. The mechanical properties of rodent Achilles tendons post dry needling and focused ultrasound treatments were assessed, showing that FUS better preserves tendon stiffness compared to dry needling. However, the healing effects of fuss on tendons has not been fully investigated. A significant knowledge gap in this field is the uncertainty regarding the optimal ultrasound parameter selection strategies due to incomplete information about the mechanisms of action of therapeutic ultrasound. Numerous animal studies have reported variable outcomes when the efficacy of therapeutic ultrasound in treating acute tendon injuries. This is likely attributed to differences in exposure conditions, the effects of which have not been studied in detail. There is insufficient knowledge about the bioeffects of therapeutic ultrasound on tissues especially tendon, and there exists a lack of consistency in the animal models used, ultrasound exposure conditions, reported outcomes, and their interpretation. For this study, our custom focused ultrasound system includes a 2 MHz therapy transducer and a 40 MHz high-frequency ultrasound transducer from Daxonix Ultrasound Nova Scotia. The 2 MHz transducer is well-suited for our application of targeting small murine tendons, 
and the high frequency imaging transducer lends excellent resolution, enabling us to assess strains induced in tendons by the FUS treatments. The objective of this study was to utilize high frequency imaging and digital image correlation techniques to characterize tendon strain induced by ex vivo FUS treatments. To reiterate the motivation behind this study, I'd like to remind everyone that the clinical rehabilitation protocols currently are based on applying controlled strains to injured tendons, thus stimulating healing. Our group would like to utilize focused ultrasound pulsing to mechanically load injured tendons as a novel regenerative rehabilitation strategy. We examined Achilles tendons from male B6 mice which were aged between 12 and 14 weeks. Their hind limbs were immersed in a water tank, which was filled with warm, degassed, deionized water. And the limbs were manually oriented in plantar flexion, which was considered the resting position for this study. Briefly, after the focused ultrasound transducers and the imaging probe were aligned on the tendon body, we started the recording for the imaging transducer, which was at t equals zero seconds. The treatments began at t equals five seconds and lasted a total of 20 seconds. The recording continued for 10 more seconds after the treatment ended. This table shows all the treatment sets evaluated in this study. We varied the pulse repetition frequency, duty cycle, and peak-to-peak -peak pressures, and analyzed the dependence of the generated strains on these parameters. The schematic elaborates the treatments in this study. A total of five cycles per burst and 10 bursts were given to each tendon. The interval between bursts, also called the interstimulus interval, was two seconds. Total treatment time was 20 seconds for all sets, and we used a sample size of five for all sets. This is an example strain plot, which was acquired for all pulsing sets. Displayed here are the tensile, compressive, and shear strains for one pulsing set. The color maps describe the location and magnitude of strain uh, of each type in every sample. As you can see by the color maps on this slide, the tensile strain component seems to be predominant among this group. We calculated the max strain for each pulsing set and averaged those values across the sample size and presented those mean values here. While the axial and compressive um, strains appear to be the predominant types of strain among all groups, and also the magnitudes of max strains seem to be heavily dependent on amplitude, pulse repetition frequency, and duty cycle, we did notice a high variability in the computed strains and therefore, um, a future study with a larger n value is warranted to confirm these results. This is a comparison of strains across all the 20% duty cycle sets varied by pulse repetition frequency and the peak to peak pressures. The 0.5 megapascal sets had higher strain magnitudes compared to the 0.1 megapascal sets at both 10 hertz and 100 hertz pulse repetition frequency. The 10 hertz PRF groups had higher strain magnitudes compared to the 100 hertz sets. Again, axial and transverse strains appear to be the predominant types among all groups. I do again want to note that given the variability in the computed strains, a future study with a larger n value is definitely warranted to confirm these results. Similarly, this is a comparison of strains across the 50% duty cycle stress sets varied by PRF and pressures. Again, the 0.5 megapascal sets had a slightly higher strain magnitude compared to the 0.1 megapascal sets at both 10 hertz and 100 hertz. And axial and transverse strains appear to be predominant among all the groups. And lower duty cycles, so 20% duty cycle, likely induced higher strains. However, again, a more rigorous investigation is warranted to establish these results. The preliminary results uh, presented here indicate that we can successfully induce 1% to 6% or even higher strains in murine Achilles tendons using focused ultrasound treatments. Digital image correlation or DIC tools 
show promise in reliably characterizing the stains uh, induced by FUS therapies. The preliminary results definitely indicated a high degree of reliance of strain magnitudes on peak-to-peak -peak pressure, duty cycle, and PRF. In general, lower duty cycles and higher peak-to-peak -peak pressures at low PRFs are beneficial for our application, which is to induce strains between 1% and 6% in murine Achilles tendons. However, high standard deviation values indicated that future studies with a higher sample size is warranted. And another limitation to the current setup is the use of manual positioning of the hind limbs. Uh, and the resting length of tendons, which is very crucial to strain magnitudes, it was likely less than the physiologic condition in this study because the limbs were in plantar flexion. And this may have led to an overestimation of strain. So that is something we will be correcting in future studies as well. The ex vivo strain data that we have collected here will certainly help guide selection of pulsing protocols for application to injured tendons. With that, I really thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions or would like to discuss more, feel free to email me at chitra.bt.edu. And I look forward to meeting all of you at the conference. Thank you.